see you all here and welcome to those who are viewing it online or uh, the announcements it needs to be cl clear that the uh, Bible school is at the Catholic Church the bulletin is wrong so uh, be aware that it's the Catholic Church is where they're having the the Bible school this week and another correction was uh, <coughs> the uh, all church uh, going out to the ballpark the explorers are play are playing the rail cats instead of the the one listed there if that makes a difference and uh, there's not quite 20 signed up yet and the sign up sheet is on the entryway uh, be sure to sign up if you're interested in going if there's 20 why uh, the tickets will not cost as much and so maybe you even have a friend who'd like to go so, so uh, it would be nice to have a good group to go to that uh, the all of the ad announcements have been playing so I don't think I need to reread them uh, are there any others that you have that are not noted okay uh, any joys or concerns to lift up we want to continue to remember Bob and Jenny sight singer and Matt may I go ahead and tell about Laura so they keep her in the kids in the prayers uh, Laura's grandmother is not well and so she and the kids went down to see the grandmother in Mexico so c continue to keep them in your prayers that's quite a job traveling that far <clears throat> but I heard the kids were really good the first trip down so um, if there are no other joys or concerns <clears throat> then we'll move on and we'll um, stand and sing our celebration songs I do want to say um, I chose these songs because of the way they make me feel so I suggest that you really feel the words as you're singing them and we'll sing them through twice the first one is spirit of the living God page 393 or on the screen <clears throat> sing page 63 blessed is name <clears throat>
join in our responsive call to worship. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my I will make I will declare that your love stands firm forever. And join in the unison congregational prayer. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for your creation, the beauty in every season. We give thanks for meaningful work, to, as well as times of rest and relaxation. Most of all, we give you thanks for your saving grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With humble hearts, we repent of our sins. Forgive us, we pray, and guide us in making the changes necessary to be more in line with your will for our lives. Give us the courage to be bold in our faith. May we feel the love and compassion of Christ as we deal with those around us. Heal the sick, comfort the lonely, encourage us as we encourage each other to stand firm in the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, since I forgot to let you sit down, uh, you can sit down in, if you want when, you're, when we're going to sing this next song. I, I will not object. It's not fair to make you stand so long. 419, okay.
down. You may sit down. <coughs> you get to sit down. I don't. <coughs> Our scripture comes from 1 Peter 1, verses 13 to 16, 22 to 23, and 2, 1 to 3. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Christ Jesus is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Now that you have purified yourselves by openly obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, Lord. Whenever I prepare a message to share, it is most often something that I need to hear. Much of this message comes from Dr. David Jeremiah and his book, Everything You Need. And I did bring that book, and it's out in the entryway, so if anyone wants to take it home and read it, feel free to do so, and uh, just drop it back off at the church when you're finished. Growing up in the Lord. When we receive Christ as our Savior, we are forgiven, made pure in God's sight, and given eternal life. But we aren't yet perfect. Growing in God's holiness is a lifelong endeavor. It is the process of godliness, but it doesn't happen to us passively. We have a part to play. 1 Corinthians 7, 1 says... Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. There is more to following Christ than coming to church, listening to the message, and fellowshipping with other believers. These things are important, but there is more for us to do. God does his part, and with his help, we do ours. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 3 and 8. To God's elect, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and the sprinkling by his, blood, by his blood. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. <clears throat> Our spiritual formation and growth are a joint exercise between us and Christ. With him providing the multiplied grace, our role is to diligently add the needed effort to grow in godliness. Godliness is simply becoming more like God every day. Jesus Christ is the earthly portrait of God. Hebrews 1.3 says, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. If you want to know about the wrath of God, look at the righteous anger of the Son of Man. If you want to know any facet of God's character or personality, then study the life of Jesus. Our job is to manifest and reveal Christ to the world by what we say, what we do, who we are. So how exactly do we become more like Jesus? To add godliness to our lives, we must remember to whom we belong. Then we need to know where we belong. One of the greatest concepts Peter used was the idea of being a traveler, passing through this life on the way home to heaven. One of the signs of godliness is an increasingly wanting to be where Jesus is. Then we are to be the platform and the pulpit from which God proclaims his message to the world. Now that's a scary thought. Have you ever heard about the guy who started the Burley Man Coffee Company? His name is Jeremy Wiles, and his company's slogan is, Be kind and drink great coffee. Jeremy is a follower of Christ and his company puts its money into helping single moms in need. He said, as a Christian, we are supposed to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. To grow in godliness, we have to work hard to maintain our own honorable conduct. It's not enough to examine our God-given identity. We must also express it. Live like we belong. The writer of Psalm 73 endured a very confusing time of discouragement and depression. But the reality that pulled him through was this. Yet I... Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. When we realize that we are God's special possession, we will think twice about the things we do, the places we go, the words we say, the feelings we harbor. 
the habits we keep, and the entertainment we consume. If we belong to God, shouldn't our lives be characterized by godliness? Just as we diligently add godliness to our lives by remembering that we are God's special people, we should keep in mind heaven, God's special place. We become like the place we most want to go and the person we most want to see. An older woman once asked a missionary, why does God let us get old and weak? And the missionary answered, I think God has planned the strength and beauty of youth to be physical, but the strength and beauty of old age is spiritual. If we stayed young and strong, and beautiful, we might never want to leave. This world isn't our true home. We're here for a brief time. Godliness is also about stewardship. A steward is someone who represents an owner. He faithfully carries out the wishes of that owner. Paul wrote, we are ambassadors for Christ in 2 Corinthians 5.20. So what are our assignments? We are to bring glory to God through our words, our deeds, our thoughts, our actions, whenever possible. And we may not know it, but our trials, our suffering, our tragedies can become testimonies. No one can, cuff, can comfort someone after a loss better than one who has been through it themselves. No one can help someone change directions than someone who has done it. No one can help someone beat an addiction better than someone who has done it. We are to become more like Jesus. Now, how do we become more like someone else? One thing, we study everything about them and emulate them. Just in the same way that a great actor or actress immerses themselves in a character until they become that person, we can immerse ourselves in Jesus to become more godly. Yes, <clears throat> this certainly takes work. It takes putting him first and letting him be Lord over everything in our lives. Too often, I think we all compartmentalize our lives. When we invite Jesus into our hearts, there's rooms we don't want him to go into. There's closets we don't want him to clean out. And only by the grace of the Holy Spirit can we finally come to a place where we say, Lord, I'm tired of this mess. Come and clean it. Clean the whole house. Help me to truly become more like you. We can read all about Christ 
in the Gospels. And we can keep reading his word throughout our lives. And as we study our Lord's walk and his talk, maybe we'll more often ask this famous question, what would Jesus do in this situation? The more we walk in his steps, the more attuned we become to his will. The world is full of hurting people who need saving, as only Christ can save them. In the process, they desperately need people who love and follow God to show up in their lives. Our words need to enrich and uplift those who hear them. A stranger on the street, an old friend, someone you've known for years, it doesn't matter who. And we don't always know when they're hurting. We just know that what we say will make a difference. What we post online makes a difference. Kindness creates its own chain reaction. When we do something unexpectedly for someone else, the gesture takes on a life of its own, and we never know where the ripple effects will end. When someone does something to hurt us, whether it was intentional or not, we need to forgive them. Someone once said, unforgiveness is like drinking poison, expecting it to kill the other person. Unforgiveness makes us sick and can destroy us. To forgive someone is not to endorse or to excuse their behavior. Forgiving others is not something we can do easily. But with God's help, we can do it. And the peace that passes understanding can then be ours. It's hard to feel God's peace when our hearts are filled with anger. Colossians 3.12 says, Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I struggled and perhaps still struggle with patience. I bought myself a book that I thought would help. It said, Lord, give me patience. What I found out was he just gives more people in front of us that we need to be patient with. So we need to be careful what we ask for. He'll give it to us. <laughs> We ask ourselves, how can I love like Jesus today? Remember, it all starts with Jesus' love for us. He gave everything he had so we would have everything we need to love like he does. John 4, 11 to 14 says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. As we grow in him, we grow in gratitude. Let God heal your bad memories by enhancing your grateful recollections of his grace. 
learn to be thankful to him every day. He met us on our own Damascus Road, and he has washed away our guilt. He has cast our shame behind his back, and he has given us a legacy of grace. Let's make sure we never get over it. In closing, <clears throat> remember when the world is unstable, chaotic, and out of control, we can trust God in God's steady, consistent, never-ending grace. 2 Peter 1.10 says, For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we confess our faults and failures, our sins, and repent of them. Here and now we ask Jesus Christ to come into our lives. Give us a faith as precious as Peter's and help us build a life of spiritual strength by adding to our faith the Christ-like qualities you desire in us. May we keep growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ until that day when we receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of God. There are many in our church and in our community who are hurting. Some are very sick. Some have lost jobs. Some fear losing their homes. Lord, we're helpless in knowing what or how to help. So we do what we can. We come to you in prayer. We lift them up. Put your arms around Bob and Jenny Sightsinger and all of the others that we know who are needing your special care today. We also pray for our country and for our leaders. And it's not always easy for us to do this, especially if we let our own views get in the way of our prayer time. We don't always know the right way, Lord, but you know. And we ask that you guide and direct the leaders of our country and the leaders of the world that we may we won't have perfect peace but Lord we long for peace and give us the strength to whatever our conditions in the world and in our country may be to follow you one step at a time holding tightly to your hand doing the best we can to share your love and your word and to share Jesus with all of those that we meet Help us to trust that you are in control of world events and give us the grace and strength to stand firm in our faith regardless of the trials that fall, befall us. Bind us together in love so that we can support one another. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> And then I'll have you stand 
as we sing the doxology and receive our gift. is I Surrender All, the first four verses. following worship there is coffee fellowship in the back if you would like to join us may God's wisdom go before you may his presence abide with you 
and his light surround you. Amen.